Hello, everyone. You're listening to the Small Business Show. My name is Swire Ho. You can also call me the promo guy. My guest today is Julius Livingston from One Leverage Communication. Julie is a PR professional in New York City, and she's a PR and LinkedIn master expert who transforms under the radar executive and businesses into authoritative industry thought leaders. A strategic co communications consultant, she's an expert at leveraging the PR power of LinkedIn, media placement, and digital marketing. I'm looking forward to speak to Julie today. Before that, welcome to the show, Julie. Oh, it's great to be here, Swire. Thanks for having me. I, I love to dive deeper with uh, the LinkedIn PR that you do. Uh, but before that, for listeners who might not yet be familiar with your work, what should they know about you? Well, they should know that I'm, I've been in public relations and marketing for more than three decades. And I have worked in the corporate sector, leading marketing and communications teams for some brands that are well-known, including Liz Claiborne, Scholastic, the, you know, the children's publishing and entertainment company, um, and also for the Toy Association and the annual New York Toy Fair, which I turned into a media magnet. More recently, I've developed an expertise on LinkedIn and using it as a marketing tool. I started by using it as a marketing tool for my own business to, you know, to attract new clients. And I'm now doing that work for, for other companies and executives to help them to stand out on the platform. Thank you for sharing. I think it's funny that I asked this question because obviously we're live streaming on LinkedIn, but why LinkedIn? You know, why LinkedIn for a uh, business professional? You know, LinkedIn is the world's biggest net business networking platform. It has over 900 million users in, I think, 61 countries. It's in many different languages now as well. And it's really um, a trusted place for business people to connect with one another to either connect with people they already know, but also to expand their connections and their network um, by meeting others on, on LinkedIn. And it's a platform to showcase your thought leadership and your competitive advantage in a certain, in, in a non-promotional way. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest that business owners go on LinkedIn and say, oh, I'm the best in my industry and my product is outstanding and, you know, using all those superlatives because that won't get you much credibility. But if you leverage the platform in just the right way by using proper language and phrasing and sharing stories and expertise, you will find that you're going to meet all these new resources and you might get called to appear on podcasts like this. Um, from you might get contacted by journalists. Um, you might you might be connected to speaking opportunities and all kinds of marketing opportunities that really elevate your brand. Yeah, a lot of interesting point there. Let's break it up one by one. You know, first, I think it's very important separating ourselves from the crowd. Even I would say if you are an executive, maybe your chief marketing officer, or even you, you're the CEO of the company. There are a lot of CEO out there and there are a lot of CEO on LinkedIn. So how would you begin to separate ourselves and, you know, to really give people the authoritative uh, thinking that, you know, I am one of the best CEO in the industry? That's a great question. And I recommend two things. First of all, I think um, you should have a company page on LinkedIn, although people really do want to connect with other humans on LinkedIn. It is a social networking platform. Having a business page is a good thing, but really using the platform to promote your personal brand and how that your personal brand aligns with your company brand values is critical. And it's really a way of setting your company yourself apart um, in the sector that in which you work. So if you are a business owner, let's say, um, in the widgets sector, you're going to want to stand, you want people to come to you and buy your widgets as opposed to from your competitor, right? Mm -hmm. Well, what makes you different? I mean, you know, what is it about um, the way you approach your business, how you, you care for employees, the company culture that you've created? Is that positive? What can you, you know, is it innovative? Like what things can you share about it without coming across as very self-promotional? Because that won't get you anywhere. Um, but to get traction, you want to share information that people can really glean from and learn from. 
And that positions you as an expert and an industry authority and somebody that they want to come back to again and again for information, tips on improving their own business. Yeah, sometimes it's interesting, you know, the post that I post on LinkedIn myself because I, I also am very active. You know, if I post what our company did or, you know, a new blog that, I, that we have, the engagement is very low, but I like networking. Sometimes I've been posting pictures uh, that I'm networking. People like actually see my face. I don't think they will care, but then I get more engagement for me, you know, showing my face on LinkedIn. Do you notice that it's-, it's I do, it's actually I do. More That's humanized. such a good point, Swire. I'm glad you, you brought that up. In fact, some of the posts that I do for my clients. So I, for clients, I develop their editorial content strategy for LinkedIn, and then I do the ghostwriting for their content. And I do find- that when we um, sporadically use personal photos of them in the field with other team members delivering a presentation, let's say they're on a stage or at a podium or interacting with people at a conference or a trade show, that those posts, that imagery gets a lot of traction. Because again, people want to connect with other people, right? It's that human element and it makes it more personal when they could see who you are. And that's also why video works so well on LinkedIn, just like we're doing right now, because people get a sense of you, right? Mm -hmm. They want to, you know, people who like you because they hear how you present yourself are going to probably be more apt to want to do business with you. Yeah, that's, that's true. And Sometimes it's tough, right? You know, if you are photogenic, if you, you know, live for the camera, then that's the right platform for you. But what if some of us who are more shy and, you know, didn't yeah. really know what to say in front of a camera? Well, there are great um, alternatives now. And, and I, 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 I know that so many business owners, they're the big idea people, but they're not always the ones to go in front of a camera and, you know, really be comfortable doing that. They can be more introspective and, and almost shy. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are a few alternatives. Number one, you can develop your presence on LinkedIn without using video, right? You can just create valuable content. And I suggest that any business owner who wants to get active on LinkedIn and really showcase their expertise and their persona, start with one post a week Mm. and do that on Wednesday, which is the most highly trafficked day on LinkedIn. The golden hour on LinkedIn is in the morning, usually between like 8 and 1030 a.m. in your time zone. Mm -hmm. So post then. But LinkedIn has a new tool that's kind of cool. I'm going to I haven't tried it yet, but I've listened to other uh, other executives do it and I really like it. And it's called LinkedIn audio. So if you're not so comfortable in front of a camera, but you do feel comfortable just talking and having a conversation LinkedIn audio is a new feature. They just introduced it, I don't know, maybe a month or two ago, where it's like a podcast and you can have a conversa- a casual conversation anywhere. It could be just you speaking, but it could be you in conversation like we're having now, but just audio so you're not on camera. And that could take away that fear factor of, you know, like, oh my God, somebody's looking at me, um, you know, and being so getting self-conscious and just having that conversation. I've really enjoyed listening to these and I'm planning to do some myself. Yeah, I saw the problem on, on LinkedIn. And, and I think for algorithm point of view, if, if they have the tool, obviously they would do more to promote that if you have the audio um, on, on, the, on the platform itself. It's a great way to experiment, you know? The other thing I love about audio, and I often, you know, as a publicist, I often book my clients for podcasts or radio interviews is that it's a wonderful platform to test out your key messages. Mm. It really gives you time to practice um, saying your key messages verbally, and that draws your attention to it. And you can, you through audience feedback and just hearing yourself, you're, you're, you have the opportunity to fine tune it and refine it. And so I really like audio, um, audio platforms for that reason. Yeah, for someone who's always looking to learn, you know, what I'm learning for myself, and I, I like the practice that I get on podcasts, right? So if you see politician, if you see a seasoned uh, business That's professional, right. when they ask you a straight question, they could somehow swing it to the way that 
it valuable for them. They're not really answering yes or no, but then it sounds really nice. And then you, they kind of answer your question. So it's a very intricate way to, to answer. It questions. really is. It yeah. really is. I, you know, often when I'm training um, an executive to, to be a media spokesperson and they haven't had experience, I always try to book them on radio and podcasts first that are just mm. audio, because I really think it's a great training ground to familiarize yourself, your own self with your best, with your key messages to make sure you're getting them across and continually to refine them. The nice thing about the LinkedIn audio is that, you know, if you don't like what you recorded, just delete it. Mm -hmm. And for audio only, you could put all the notes around your, your screen. No one's going to see right. it. You can have your notes. <laughs> that's right. You have that comfort factor um, of having your notes in front of you and, you know, talking points or potential questions that you want to ask if you're having a conversation with someone, it's a great, great tool. Okay. Let's go deeper. Like in on LinkedIn, you know, become a thought leader in your industry. You know, I'm certainly, I don't care what industry that you're in, you're going to have competitor and your competitor is probably on LinkedIn. So how do you advise us to become, you know, making a mark, you know, to become a leader sure. in our industry? It's kind of a multi-pronged process. The first thing, in my opinion, is to optimize your profile so you real so that you you look professional and that you stand out. Mm -hmm. So here are a few things that business owners can do for themselves. Go to your you know create a profile if you don't have one, and make sure that you have a professional headshot um, where you where you don't look like you're gardening or surfing or it's this is not Facebook. Mm. You don't have to wear a shirt and tie, but or a suit, but you know. Look business casual, I would say. Um, it is definitely worth an investment to have a professional take your headshot. And I'm sure, you know, there are so many resources online that you could find um, in your local area. I would highly recommend that. Get a professional headshot. You'll find you're going to use it in so many places. So the area right behind your headshot is often unused real estate. And I love this as a place for entrepreneurs and business owners to add another graphic, perhaps of the business owner in action in the field, giving a speech uh, or presentation or at a trade show, showing their trade show, you know, booth or exhibit. And you can also even layer some content above that, like, you know, um, as experts in expert in company culture, something like that. I don't know. You can look and see what your competitors do, but Definitely use the background header as a place to also reinforce your message. This is vital because even if, you know, people scan on social media. So mm -hmm. even if they don't get to the rest of your profile, if they just see the header, you got them. You got your message. You've given your, put your message across. So fill out your headline. Your headline can be, um, it's a, a, you know, a, a brief statement. I think it's 120 characters about you and what you do, but make it more than, you know, vice president of marketing, you know, give it a little bit of a, a twist and jazz it up a little bit, you know, VP of marketing um, and trend hunter or trend scout, you know, <laughs> something that's going to, again, separate you. Go down and make sure that your contact information is also there. So, so that people have an email address to reach you. I can't tell you how many times I go to somebody's profile and there's no way to contact them. You know, have some kind of contact information there. You don't have to put your phone number, but definitely an email address where they can find you. <clears throat> Otherwise, you could be missing business opportunities. Julie, quick question. Let's say I'm doing my profile, right? I'm updating it. The the profile section and then also your work history, should it be a first person point of view or a third person point of view? That's a great question, Swire. <coughs> um, I would always go with first person, um, especially if you're talking about, you know, a current position. Mm -hmm. And I would... As a business owner, you another you could do your experience section. You don't have to do it as a resume. Um, and in some cases, I recommend creating using the LinkedIn profile, the experience area, mm -hmm. almost like a landing page for your business. So, and you could look at my profile on LinkedIn 
um, if you want to get an idea of what that looks like. And I could, I could put my, um, my URL is here in, in here in the chat. Um, just give me one second, but yeah, I, I, I find that, um, doing that is very helpful. It mm -hmm. actually gives you the ability instead of just listing your titles, um, you have the ability to call out certain skills. Like for me, it would be, you know, media relations expert or, you know, a uh, builder of social media communities, what, you know, things like that under each uh, experience and not just, um, so if you want to scroll down a little bit, you'll see that my experience section um, is more like a landing page. Okay. So really like how you can help the client and then what exactly, is something? exactly, exactly. Okay. Right. So you can see how I did that. Um, yeah. Sometimes when I go to profile, it's, it's boring. They list all the things that they do, like features and benefits. It doesn't really, I don't really care. That's at that not going to grab yeah. somebody. And that's not to say that you should be so sales salesy and sell promotional in your profile. Don't mm -hmm. do that because you want to retain your credibility, but you can definitely, um, definitely promote the, your high, the highlights, your successes throughout your profile. Okay. You should definitely do that in your about section. Um, this, you have a lot of room in the about section. And I don't know if it's necessary to use all the room they give you because it is a lot. And I don't know how many <laughs> people actually read these things. But I would say a paragraph or two is plenty to really kind of give people an idea of your, your personal essence, your personality, and what you bring to your particular industry. What makes you stand out as a leader, as an authority in your business? Um, so use the about section. Um, if you are, if you have more than 500 followers, uh, connections on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. you might want to consider switching to creator mode on LinkedIn, which is sort of a, a leveling up of the profile. It's free and it gives you the opportunity. It gives you some really cool features like a featured section. If you want to go back to my profile, I'll show you where the featured section is. And that's like a visual theatrical marquee of your work. And I love that because it's just gives you that. If go up a little bit, go up. There okay. you go. See the featured section. So you can dictate what it is that you want people to see. That's right. You can, okay. what I do is every time I post, I feature it there. Mm -hmm. So it looks really exciting and yeah. fresh. So this um, could be a little sip it, or even if you are maybe every so-and-so you uh, put something that sells you there, maybe a landing page that, you know, could prompt people to take action. You could, you could put a, a slide carousel in there. Mm -hmm. It's really wonderful. The only thing also being in creator mode allows you to do LinkedIn live, which is the show we're doing the platform we're using right now, the live streaming. Is that only um, uh, when you go over 500 followers? No, but you you have a choice. You, not, not Just because you have over 500 connections, not followers, connections, doesn't mean that you automatically get creator mode. You have to turn it on. Hmm. So there's a switch that you have to, you know, the, a toggle that you have to uh, put to activate. But it, it's not right for everyone. And I will say there is one downside. If you go up a little bit on my profile, I'll show you. Mm-hmm. So when you're in creator mode, you no longer have the connect button. You have something called more. Okay. So for people who want to connect with you on LinkedIn, they do have to click through that and go to connect through the more button. That is the only downside of creator mode, in my opinion. But the benefits way out, you know, really outweigh that. Um, it really just gives you a lot of things that where you could, that you can jazz up your profile with, and again, make it stand out and attractive to potential customers, existing customers, your board of directors, any target audience that you want to reach. Okay. Uh, that's a question that I always want to ask Julie. I think you're the best person to answer it. Um, Developing a following on LinkedIn. Like, is it a numbers game? If so, 
for let's say a small business professional, right? So what is the number that we need to have to be, you know, worth something, you know, on LinkedIn? Yeah, no, that's a great question, Swire. Uh, you know, every business is unique, mm -hmm. but I'm going to say that the threshold is having at least 500 uh, connections on LinkedIn. Okay. And it's something that you could chip away at, you know, a few times a week, take 10 or 15 minutes to reach out and make some new connections with people. You'd be surprised how many people you probably know, have known or amassed over the course of your career. Make sure that you're connected with them on LinkedIn and keep building it. So once you have more than 500 connections, you're starting to build um, a following. And hopefully some of those people are actually following you, which means they get notified whenever you post something. Are you, are so you if you want to go back to my profile, I will show you the bell. So if you um, if you connect with potential customers, you see that little bell at the top of my profile on the right? This one? Nope. The bell. Go to the right. Oh, okay. Uh, the bell. There you go. Oh, wow. So when you, when you connect with somebody, you have an opportunity to, to click that bell and activate it. Mm -hmm. If it's activated, okay, so now every time I post, you're going to get a notification that I post. <laughs> okay. And that gives you the opportunity to comment on my posts and really start to develop that rapport and that relationship. Yeah. For uh, those of you listening, it will be when you click on the profile on the top right, right underneath the banner. So it's a uh, neat Ju little tool. Julie, are you picky about, you know, people connecting with you or who do you suggest people to connect with, to build the presence? Do I just connect with everyone that sent me a connection request? I think I really, I recommend that you be more selective. I don't mm. think it's not, you want to have the right followers and the right mm. connections, not just anybody. Right. So I, I like to look at people's um, profiles first and I like to see, do I know them through a, another connection that um, somebody else who I'm a first connection of that kind of, tells me that they're, they're vetted. Um, are they somebody that I might be able to do business with potentially? Um, honestly, I do get contacted by a lot of students. And so I usually don't accept those unless I know them mm -hmm. um, or unless they're from my alma mater. Um, I, uh, you know, I'm really looking to connect with people in a way the with, I'm looking to connect with individuals where we can help each other. Like, but there's a, a benefit for each of us. Okay. The follow on question will be once you connect with that person, let's say this is someone that you could do business with or as a colleague, right? So what do I do afterwards? Do I just let it be or do I message them? What would you suggest that we do? Well, you could write them like a one sentence line, like great to be connected on LinkedIn. Um, you know, if you know the person through another contact, let's say they were a second connection mm -hmm. and they're really somebody you want to speak with, I would just send them a note saying, you know, great to be connected on LinkedIn, have a good weekend or have a good week. And then probably in a few weeks, a few weeks after that, maybe a week or two after, you could send a note and say, you know, I'd love to have a one-on-one -on -one with you to explore business synergies. Um, here's my Here's a link to my scheduler and see if they respond. Some people will, some people won't. Yeah, I like that. Don't, I, be, I, don't be overly <laughs> persistent. I know. Okay? You want to maintain the relationship and some people aren't into that. Yeah, I, I specifically dislike, you know, when I make the connection, they send me like a 10 paragraph. I, I'm not, I never read that. And, and I like your approach, like, you know, watch the person a little bit. Maybe yeah. if they're active on LinkedIn, uh, really comment. praise them you on comment. Yeah. Praise them. Right. And then they was say, Oh, this person really like what I do. Maybe I'll connect with them to see, you know, what they have to say. So that will be better than you'll send me a 10 paragraph and it's, sell me you know stuff. And it, you have to be sincere about it yeah. and authentic. And so for example, today, this morning, I got a connection request from somebody who must've sent out a mass email blast. So they never really looked at my profile. Uh -huh. from a trucking company. Okay. Now I'm in the communications business. The chances of me using a trucking company are very slim. I guess my clients maybe, but yeah. it's a, it's a little far-fetched. And the, the note was so um, 
it was obviously that it was a blast to a lot of different people. They knew nothing about me. They never said anything, you know, like, oh, I read your post recently. That was really interesting. What you said about blogging. That's how you form a relationship. Not like I have a trucking company. Do you want to buy my services? <laughs> so immediately I just, I just deleted it. So, you know, you really, you have to show people that you're interested in what they do and that, you know, you offer them something and not, don't forget those sales pitch emails. They don't work. Yeah, I, I really do think, you know, I, I really like your approach that you have to humanize it. Obviously, when you start, you know, if you don't feel comfortable, do the audio or maybe do, a, you know, have pe people take pictures of you when you go to a networking event or when you maybe on the work, even people will care uh, if we, if I'm working by the computer, that sometimes could be a, a picture ops too, you know, so. Definitely, uh, especially if you're on a Zoom screen. I do a hmm. lot of screenshots because they show me with people I know. And then those are really nice to post and kind of give shout outs to people. Um, a, a lot of small businesses exhibit at trade events or give presentations at trade events or sponsor programs and such take photos of that. That's a great way to show how active you are in your industry. Yeah, I think it, it does. And also, I'm sorry. And mm -hmm. also it's a wonderful way to tell, to tell people that you're going to be at an event coming up. Like anybody out there going to the consumer electronics show, let's meet for coffee. Would you add client as your LinkedIn? Because sometimes I get questions if i add them onto linkedin then everyone knows who my clients are and they might steal my client Would well yeah you could make your contacts private okay so you might want to do that okay but you will add your client and interact with them on LinkedIn. definitely definitely okay. but just make it private so that not anybody can go in and see do do you put do would you advise you know executive to uh share the thoughts and you share what they're doing and to build their, their presence. Is this one of the strategies that you would advise us to do? The strategy of, of uh, becoming a thought leader, you know, going back to, Oh my gosh, uh, there's so much value in establishing yourself as a business owner, as a thought leader and authority in your field. Mm -hmm. um, it really puts you on the radar, your company on the radar shows people um, what, you know, how you do what you do and the special uh, approach that you take in serving clients. And there's just no better platform out there than LinkedIn to do this. Um, it, it truly, it truly, truly works. I, <coughs> I do work for a chief customer officer at a fortune 50 company. So it's a, it is a very large company. I know most of your viewers are small business owners, but just hear me out. She needed to, develop relationships with her very large field force, more than 40,000 people. Mm -hmm. And we have done that on LinkedIn by posting regularly, by posting content that her followers and her connections can benefit from. Now, when she travels, they co people come up to her and say, I feel like I know you. I'm getting so much value out of your content. So of course, that, bo that has such a positive effect on who she is as a leader. Mm, right. People want to do business with her because they feel like they know her as a person. That's great. Julie, I was wondering if you could give us listener uh, some homework. So what is something that you have advised us to develop and work on on LinkedIn if we just started and we wanted to you know, follow the process along to uh, be more engaging on LinkedIn? Sure. Here are a couple of my tip, my bit, my most important tips, I think. Number one, have a LinkedIn profile. That's <laughs> you got to be on there uh -huh. and have a company page. Number two, um, you know, really optimize your profile. Make sure that your profile really communicates the essence of who you are as a person. Add some, you know, I always say warm it up a little bit, you know, just like that latte you have in the morning, warm up your profile so people can get a sense of who you are and the magic that you bring to your particular business. Use the, get a professional headshot and use mm -hmm. that background image behind the headshot to tell the story about you and your business, your company in a very simple way. You can see on my profile, 
I have a picture of me in conversation with somebody. It looks like I'm having a conversation with somebody. And it also says what I do, public relations and LinkedIn marketing. So when in a second, people know what I do. Right. Optimize the about section to, uh, you know, to really embellish on your key attributes and the things that you, the value that you bring to every interaction. And then consider switching up to creator mode so that you can add a custom URL in the header of your, of your profile mm -hmm. and that you have the featured section and LinkedIn live. The featured section is my number one thing. I love that. I just love that because you could always change the graphics there and they just telegraph your key targets about what you do, your recent accomplishments and who you are. These are all good points. And so all the listeners, you know, you got some homework to do. <laughs> uh, Julie, I think we, we're getting to really personal individual questions now, you know, with all the details. For a listener who might want to reach out to you for their particular question, what would be a good way to reach out to you? Well, I know you're not going to be surprised when I say they should reach out to me on LinkedIn <laughs> and um, or through my website, which is wantleverage.com. Um, you can also download my free tip sheet how to make your CEO stand out on LinkedIn on my website um, and keep following, you know, follow me on LinkedIn. I'm always posting tips and, um, you know, insights on how to better use the platform. Thank you, Julie. I'll post the show notes, uh, you know, on the uh, page today and, you know, thanks for giving me the homework. You know, there, I, I got some work to do. <laughs> Get to work. Swire. Great to chat with you today. Thanks right, so thank much. Thank you. Bye.